so glad that you joined us here on The Reach. I've got an exciting topic that I think you'll really enjoy. It's called, What's In It For Me? Uh, but before we jump off in today, just wanted to say, if you've been enjoying the show, uh, or you enjoy this episode, we would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like it, uh, let friends know, and then if you're more of an audio uh, listener, we want to let you know that you can tune in as well on any of the podcast platforms that are out there. Uh, and we know that um, you'll enjoy whether you're on a drive or working as you listen. Let's just jump off in. This is an age-old question. What's in it for me that I feel is so relevant today? And in the early part of me doing ministry, as I traveled around the world, I began to realize that it wasn't just us in America or North America, the Western world that asked that question. But as I began to journey as a young man to other nations, I realized that kind of those timeless questions are really in everyone's heart. One of the scriptures in the Old Testament says uh, he has hidden or placed eternity in people's hearts. Everyone has these eternal questions of, what am I doing here? What's the meaning of life? What What is my significance in being on this planet? Along with how am I just gonna make it and help my family make it today? It really sets the stage to delve off into what does God say about these giant questions and then the how to make it questions that we face. What, what does he have to say about our well-being? And a great story that kind of capsulizes that is seen in the master himself when he's coming back into Jerusalem in Luke 19. He looks over the city and he actually begins to weep. And he begins to weep because he's so moved with compassion and concern because the city, in essence, he knows is about to reject him as Messiah. And he knows what that's going to cause to happen for the city and the fate of the city. And it's found there in verse 42 when Jesus says, How I wish today that you of all people would understand the way of peace. But now it's too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. And before I continue on in reading that passage of what Jesus said, just the emphasis that God first and foremost cares about our well-being. So many of us have been through so many different things. And for some of you watching, that started even way back in childhood. Horrible things that might have transpired that we see happen or happen to us directly. And the number one thing God's concerned about is our peace. It is our well-being. That is the heart of the master. And he has a way for us to experience his peace and his well-being, his purpose, the sense of significance. And continuing on with a verse, verse 43, before long your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close you in from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. Here God was wanting through Jesus himself, the very one that was foretold that would be the Messiah and bring peace and bring all these blessings the very one that had come and was there on the scene doing mighty miracles, giving the greatest teachings that had ever been given out to humanity. And Israel, Jerusalem, missed the very move of God that they were looking for. They missed it and actually said, crucify him. See, so many times if we're not careful, the very answer that God has to all of life's problems, he brings to us. And if we're not in tune with him, we'll actually reject the very solution points that he has for us, just like what Jerusalem did with Jesus. It was just within 40 years, this horrible outcome came when the Roman generals marched in after a four-month siege of Jerusalem that crippled her. And when they marched into the city after besieging it, they lit the whole city on fire. The temple burned. It was horrid what took place. Uh, some experts believe that over a million were killed as a result of just that one siege. 
And it wasn't what God meant for all for the city. He wanted the city to be a light for the world, a light that would shine bright with the peace and the blessings of God. And from there, the gospel would shine so bright as an example in that city of the goodness of God. But the people, they rejected Jesus, starting with the religious leaders all the way down, inciting the people themselves to reject. And that spirit of rebellion, not accepting what God had, carried on for those years that came and they rebelled against the Roman Empire and then these horrible atrocities happened. God right now wants us to tap in to being his light today. We find that previously in this very chapter where Jesus reveals about himself the very essence of why he came and what he wanted to do in that hour. In verse 10, he said, the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which is lost. See, Jesus was always about what God the Father was about, and it was seeking out those that were hurting, those that were broken, those that were in need, and giving them life. If we will tap into that mission, open our eyes all around us, there are people that are hurting in our, our spheres of influence. I think even this week, I had two incredible opportunities to be the light in this way and get my eyes off my little issues so that God could do something greater through me to those that were in need. One was coming back from servicing my car, the busyness of, hey, man, I need not only an oil change, but I got a flat in this uh, this tire and had to have that tire and another tire changed and the the boys were with me and uh, thankfully this dealership had a service that would run us back home and in the midst of being run back home meaning I was gonna have to wait longer longer amount of time than I originally had been told but in that there was a divine setup I began to talk to the driver and so many times when I encounter new people I'm always just pushing myself to say what does God want done in this moment? Who does God want touched? And if we'll begin to ask those questions, even when it seems like we're throwing a curveball, what is God wanting to do right here and now through me? As I began to hear his heart, as he said, I took a break off university, just the stress was a little bit great and too much for me to bear. And I decided to take this kind of summer job of driving people around for the car dealership. And lo and behold, as I kept just asking the right questions, come to find out the university he had studied at way back in the beginning of me leading mission teams, I had been at that very university, Laterno University down in Texas. One of the early uh, outreaches that I prepped my leadership team that I was gonna help lead overseas that summer, I, I prepped them and took them in and did an outreach there. And I'm like, this is not coincidental. This is the Lord. And so I knew I had to share of the goodness of God. I had to share and make sure he was right with the Lord. Come to find out he had heard of Jesus but just like so many people in our Western culture, they may hear about Jesus, but they haven't experienced Jesus. In that moment, I ask him to bow and pray with me to make sure that he really was in relationship with the one that he had heard about and that he knew for sure where he would go one day when he would leave this earth. It was awesome and so cool as well, the boys being in the car, seeing not just overseas, but right here in day-to-day -day life, how dad can so easily share with someone and get them to a point that they're saying yes to the lover of their soul, their creator, saying yes to Jesus, making him a Lord and Savior of their life. The other encounter was someone that I actually had built a relationship with, and that was a neighbor in, that lived in our neighborhood. Uh, I'd reached out to this individual previously and was really busy so many times we're busy thinking, hey, we're doing things that are great. They're going to help us advance the mission or uh, get the next big sale or help position our family so that we can go on that grand vacation and have more quality time together. But in that moment, I, the irony of it is I was actually preparing for a session just like this where we'd be recording episodes for you where we could uh, talk about things like this. But in my heart... I just felt that nudge. Hey, this 
gentleman that you've developed a relationship with in the neighborhood, this is the moment you've been waiting for where he's gonna be open with his time and his schedule, even though it's not convenient with your schedule, for you to share with him. And before it was all said and done, I was able to show him how he at any moment could reach out and know for sure as well of his eternal destination by praying that simple prayer of salvation. We need to begin to look around us. And that's what Jesus said. Another passage right in Luke, Luke 10, verse two. He said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. See, there's already a deficit. We think, oh, well, people know, people know in America about God. It's okay. I might get another opportunity. But the bottom line, because there is such a deficit of laborers, those that'll say, yes, I will do your bidding. I will help bring peace to people. I'll help bring hope to them. So often we're caught up in the demands and our needs of those that we love or ourselves, whatever's going on, trying to get that job out of coming after coming out of a pandemic, trying to make sure that we cover the bases, that we don't look at the needs of others. And the Lord is wanting to open our eyes to how great the harvest is and how great the need is. Harvest is simply nothing other than people. People are God's point. People are God's reason for why he did everything for us. He wants to reach them and manifest to them, but he can't without the extension of us, without the extension of you. So when we say what's in it for me, absolutely everything is in it. God wants everything to be ours. In fact, it says it gives him good pleasure to bless us in these different facets of life. But if we get it out of order, seeking the blessing first, we actually miss heaven's greatest blessings because they don't start by getting out here and bringing it to ourselves, they start from the inside out doing his will. That's why Jesus always was saying, not my will, but your will be done. His will is to use our lives as extensions of his goodness and heaven's manifestation. So when we reach out in that way, we're seeking first his righteousness, his kingdom and righteousness, all these other things will be added unto us. And as we give our everything, he requires us, wants us to give everything. When we give everything in following him, hey, I'm available, I'm usable, I'm moldable, whatever you need in the moment, I am willing to yield to you in that way. See, Jerusalem wasn't willing to yield to God in the very purpose God had ordained for us to have true significance and purpose in our lives, we simply need to find what his desires are and make them our desires. When we do that, then what his plan is becomes our purpose, and that purpose brings fulfillment not only of his plan, but true fulfillment and satisfaction from the inside out in everything that we're facing in life. As we focus on that which is dear to him, could be at work, start right where you are. Don't wait till some grand opportunity. Don't put it off. I started when I was a young teenager, 12, 13, 14, looking for opportunities to be Jesus to people. That meant going into the old folks home. Yeah, I had my grandmother, I had my mom drive me to go to the nursing homes of where I lived, and I would share a nugget from the Word of God, and then I'd lead people in the prayer of salvation. I'd pray for them, the needs, the things that were they were facing, and there was such a fulfillment that came out of it. And from that day till now, I've never stopped. I've kept reaching out to others. In the same way, God has people already right out there in your path, that are part of his divine plan 
for you to reach them, for you to transform them by his love and his goodness. When you say, yes, I'll, I will reach out to that coworker or that person I go to school with, what happens is God meets us and there is a contentment and a satisfaction that comes that nothing else can bring. What's in it for me? Absolutely everything. What's in it for you? Absolutely everything. Because when we give of ourselves in that way, we give everything that we are and have, all our talents, all our abilities. First, it might look like, well, I'm giving up. No, it's gonna be returned, not only in this life, but a gazillion times over in the life to come. And the greatest reward in the life to come is that those very ones that we've touched, they're gonna be in eternity with us. If we've led them to Christ, we're gonna see them and rejoice with them forever. I wanna encourage you, take steps today. If you'll just simply tune into him, his voice, he'll show you those steps. And it'll be absolutely epic, the things that you experience. We trust that you've enjoyed this time that we've had together, that you've been inspired and encouraged, and that you've seen a deeper way to go farther in the destiny design that God has on your life. If you have enjoyed, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, like it, share it with a friend, and we'll see you next time.